Hey everybody, it's Joe. This is the last part of my multi-part series covering the construction of the lithium refinery plant uh, that Tesla is building here in Texas near Corpus Christi. Now, if you haven't looked at the previous parts, uh, just as a reminder, part one talked about uh, the location, why it was selected, and some of the land purchases for this uh, refinery. Part two talked about the ponds that were constructed on the site and how they're gonna be used. Part three talked about some of the construction methodologies that are being used to build this refinery. Part four looked at the actual design of the refinery itself. And part five, we looked at some specific materials and equipment that were being put together at the time of the drone flight. For today's video, we're gonna talk about the actual processes that they intend to use for creating the lithium hydroxide here at the Tesla lithium refinery plant. Now, before I get into the main video today, I do wanna take a moment and thank my Patreons that have been instrumental in putting together the information for these videos. They are Charles Keller, Desi Doolin, Harder NL, Patrick Kenny, Dennis Kelly, and Chris Drysdale. So again, thank you very much. I couldn't do this without all of your support and information. Let's take a look at what Tesla said and the various processes that will be employed here at the refinery plant. And the, um, as we look forward into the future, obviously day one, it's designed for this spodumene concentrate. It's from hard rock mines. But as we start to have recycled batteries coming back, the, the factory is designed to be feed flexible. And so we'll be actually processing lithium out of black mass, uh, as well as from brine and clay operations that are also ramping up in North America. Uh, it's all about being feed flexible and taking advantage of all of those feeds, including manufacturing scrap and end of life batteries. Turner actually revealed quite a bit of information there, but let's start with the initial raw material coming into the lithium plant, and that is spodumene concentrate. So let's talk about what that is briefly. Spodumene is a mineral that is derived from pegmatite rock, and here are some visual examples of what this looks like, and it's the most common source of lithium right now. This is the chemical composition of spodumene. It's lithium oxide, aluminum oxide, and silicon dioxide, and these chemical components will be important later on when we are talking about the processing that Tesla will be using at the refinery. Continuing to refine from the rock form, something called spodumene concentrate is much more useful for refineries. This is a crushed and ground spodumene rock, and they also go through a process to separate minerals and other impurities. When you do that, you come up with something that has 6.78% lithium oxide, about 28% aluminum oxide, and the rest is that silicon dioxide material. This 6% lithium oxide is where the term SC6, the 6% comes from. The spodumene concentrate 6 is also known as the alpha spodumene. It's not really chemically reactive. You can see what it looks like with this image. It's much more easily transported than the rock format. Now, many other refineries around the world uh, use similar processes up to this point, but from here is where the new Tesla refinery is going to be very different. Before we dive deeper into Tesla's process, let's first recall that the refinery is broken into three main sections. We have the pyrometallurgical section that uses the kilns and calcination process we talked about in part five. We have the final processing that takes the purified lithium hydroxide and prepares it for shipping. And in the middle, we have the hydrometallurgical section, which uses a variety of aqueous mixtures, tanks, filtration systems, and other chemical processes to turn the beta spodumene from the kilns and the calcination process into that final lithium hydroxide uh, format. Here is a quick review of how the materials will process through the refinery. We have the rail system bringing in the raw materials to that receiving facility that will process and move the spodumene concentrate around, put it into part three, which moves through that uh, kiln system, the calcination, the hydrometallurgical section to the final processing. We have the final processing itself. Then of course we have the pickup by trucks to ship the lithium hydroxide to its final destination. Here is Turner's further explanation of the process. So speaking to some of the innovation that we're gonna be pursuing on site, the conventional process, and I won't get too into the weeds, 
Um, but it's heavy, it's a heavy sulfuric acid consumer, it's a heavy sodium hydroxide consumer, and as a result, the byproducts that are produced from that conventional process are, are challenging to manage. Um, here, what we're going to be using are much more inert reagents. We'll be consuming soda ash, sodium carbonate, very common industrial chemical. We'll be consuming lime, again, very industrial, very common industrial chemical. Um, and it's a much more direct route that consumes 20% less energy all in. It consumes uh, reagents that are 60% less cost, uh, costly. Um, and, uh, and all in, the, the production cost is around 30% lower uh, on a unit, unit cost basis. Um, but the, the real key thing here is that the byproduct that's produced is, is much more inert. It's basically a mix of, of sand and limestone. This slide is a summary of what Turner said, and I would recommend that you pause the video and look through this to help uh, put into context what we're gonna be talking about next. Looking at the calcination process, uh, you can see the upper left-hand corner photo. That's what we talked about in part five. The bottom photo gives you an idea of the various stages of the calcination process of bringing alpha spodumene to beta spodumene. And unlike traditional methods, the one Tesla's gonna use will not create lithium carbonates. And there are a lot of different possible chemical reactions. This is just an example, but uh, we could start with the lithium oxide and uh, the sodium chlorate in a five to one mash ratio with about 5% sodium chloride at about 1173 Kelvin or about 900 degrees Celsius. It would be roasted for a period of time and then cooled by that heat exchanger. And this would create the beta spodumene that is necessary for the next part of the process. Here's a graphical depiction from Metso, also Critical Elements Lithium Corporation, of a very similar process as that one described by Tesla. The input is that crystallized beta spodumene that comes out of the calcination process and also has pretty much all of the same materials used throughout the filtration process. Now here are the inputs, the beta spodumene, the sodium carbonate, water, and some other process solutions. The conversion processing will have the soluble lithium separated and then the calcium hydroxide leaching and filtration. Some of the residue filtration would be calcium carbonate, aluminum, manganese, iron, and other impurities. There will be an ion exchange using uh, hydrochloric acid and then evaporation and extraction of the lithium hydroxide and recycling of water. And also recycled is the calcium hydroxide. And then the waste is the silicon dioxide and calcium carbonate. That's what Turner had described as the uh, limestone and also essentially sand. Now as a summary, Tesla's process uh, for calcination plans to not create lithium carbonates. And also in the hydrometallurgical processing steps, there are no back and forth processing between lithium hydroxide and lithium carbonate. Here is how Elon explained it. Yeah, I mean, like the, the most efficient form of lithium to use is lithium hydroxide instead of lithium. We're getting a little technical here, but lithium hydroxide instead of lithium carbonate. But uh, what a lot of um, uh, current industry refining things will do is they'll convert it to lithium hydroxide, then convert it to lithium carbonate, then convert it back to lithium hydroxide. That's what we mean by dig the ditch, fill the ditch, dig it again. Yeah. So we want to st stop that. In addition to cutting out the steps with the lithium carbonate and having it more efficient, there is no use of the caustic sulfuric acid or the sodium hydroxide uh, chemicals during this process. It's a much more inert uh, materials that they are planning on using. Here are some important notes before we go much further. Note one is Tesla already has agreements with Piedmont Lithium and they have the capabilities, the processes, and the equipment to do the same or very similar uh, spodumene concentrate to lithium hydroxide uh, that we just discussed that Metso provides. Both Metso, and that's via the Critical Elements Lithium Corporation, and Piedmont have operations in Quebec, and Tesla's been doing a lot of work with uh, the Canadians for the lithium refining. Piedmont is also planned to do three lithium hydroxide plants, one in Tennessee in 2025, one in Carolina in 2026, and the third was TBD. It's very possible Tesla's refinery may be that third location. Also, Metso has a similar process for something called battery black mass processing, and that is something that Tesla also mentioned. So it's very possible that partnerships with these companies 
is forming the basis for Tesla's refinery and current and future plans. Now that you have that information, let's take a look at what black mass processing is. This is essentially the e-waste comprising of crushed and shredded end-of-life battery cells. It contains mixtures of valuable metals, including lithium, manganese, cobalt, nickel, and many others. You can kind of get an idea of how the process works here. And then the bottom right is what that black mass is. Tesla would be getting just the black mass. The other two steps, the uh, crushing and shredding, would be done off-site by a third-party provider. This slide gives you kind of an overview of how this process might work. And I would recommend, again, you stop the video and take a look at this for more details because there's still a lot of information to cover. As we mentioned earlier, Metso has this capability and provides turnkey solutions that could be purchased by Tesla and installed in the future here at the refinery plant. And they essentially offer solutions that uh, treats the batteries after the mechanical separation and thermal treatment to get all those minerals. Uh, they use a hydrometallurgical process, and this is basically a process of uh, extracting metals and min minerals from aqueous solutions, concentrates, filtration system, and coming up with the recycled material. And this slide kind of gives you an idea of what that process would entail. And again, they use combinations of solvent extraction technologies, reactors, bunch of different kinds of filtration systems to remove the metals during the process. And these processes that they offer and the turnkey solution can be tailored depending on what kind of feedstock is inserted into the process. Also, this is very similar to the uh, hydrometallurgical uh, systems already being installed at the lithium refinery. So this could be either additive to that or it could be uh, something to exploit the two processing lines that we talked about earlier that Tesla is building. Now, in addition to the spodumene to lithium hydroxide processes and the black mass recycling processes, Tesla has talked about another process that they may use. It's called clay extraction with sodium chloride. I'll let Tesla explain further. Uh, but it, it is important to say, like, okay, what is the smartest way to uh, take the ore and uh, extract the lithium and, and do so in an environmentally friendly way in, instead of just the way it's always been done? Um, is we found that uh, we can actually use table salt, uh, sodium chloride, uh, to uh, basically ex extract the lithium from the ore. Now this process that Tesla has mentioned about uh, using sodium chloride to extract the lithium from clay is still very theoretical. Um, there's still some questions on the industry side, whether this can work or how it will work. But here are two possible ways. One could be a chemical reaction between the clay and sodium chloride and that would liberate the lithium. Another could be an ion exchange type process where they use sodium ions and produ produce a lithium chloride solution that would be sodiated with clay, and then they can extract the lithium that way. Again, this is all still very the theoretical, and we'll see how Tesla evolves this over time. Speaking of which, as we talked about in part one, Tesla purchased quite a bit of land and only a small fraction is being used for the current development of the lithium refinery. So there are plenty of spaces and room to grow for Tesla to expand to include the black mass battery uh, production of lithium and also the clay extraction of lithium. One final thought, all of the uh, production of lithium hydroxide and other minerals extracted during the various different kinds of processes that Tesla envisions at the lithium refinery would all be inputs to the battery cathode plant being constructed up at Giga Texas. This will play a major role in the development of the 4680 battery cells. So there you have it. We talked a lot about the various processes that Tesla may use here at the lithium refinery plant to make lithium hydroxide. We talked about the initial use of spodumene concentrate six and some of the processes that they may be using here. We also talked about future plans to increase the amount of raw material types that this plant may use to include recycled battery black mass, also some of the clay lithiums and third party lithium sources from around North America. And with all of this, this gives us a good idea that Tesla has expansion plans and uh, uh, interesting ideas for the use of this lithium plant into the future. As always, thank you very much for your support. I hope that you found this multi-part series helpful and uh, informative. 
and uh, I do very much appreciate your support. As always, take care and thanks again.